Good deal. I wanted to at least get one hand clap out of you um, before the end of the service. So if you feel like, I didn't want to clap for that guy, you can't take that one back. I already got it. Uh, welcome. If, you're, if this is your first time here, we want to make sure you hear the word welcome at least 100 times. So welcome to River City Church. Do not uh, judge your first experience based on me. I am not the lead pastor. I am the youth director. So uh, if you have students, I, I love your students, and they can go back to the youth room. We would love to have them back there. But uh, tonight, you get me. And uh, yes, I am honored. I am honored to be able to, to get up here and speak to you. Pastor Brian asked me, hey, John. Uh, my name is John Tatum, by the way. I'm the person Holly was just talking about. She said, uh, he said, hey, can you uh, preach on Wednesday for me? He said, I can either get you or Jensen Franklin. He's like, but you know, it, it's no big deal if you can't do it. I was like, no, I'll do it. So you guys could have had a treat, <laughs> but you get me instead. So it's going to be good, though. Uh, I, I got to, to speak about, uh, it was a few months ago, and it was my very first time speaking on the big stage, right? So I do what any young man does. I call my mom. I'm like, Mom, I'm getting the opportunity to speak on big stage. She was like, oh, you're my favorite kid, you know, I'm like, I knew I was, you know, the Bible teaches us that if you're going to be a favorite, be the favorite of the mother, so uh, I, uh, I love being her favorite, and I get done preaching, she calls me the next day, she was like, how was it, and I was like, I think she was thinking I was going to say, man, it was this uber spiritual experience. It was totally awesome, and uh, angels came down, and sparks were flying, but the only thing I had to say was, I didn't know when to take a drink of water. <laughs> I'm like, I needed a drink of water so bad. So if you see me take a drink of water this time, just shout amen or something, because <laughs> I'm just going to do it. Uh, but tonight, I would like to talk to you guys about consuming uh, God's Word, consuming the Word of God. And uh, my wife and I and our little daughter, we've been coming here. Uh, my daughter's not little anymore. She's nine. But uh, we've been coming here for going on nine years, right? Nine years. And we came in here. It was a Sunday. And we knew we wanted to be involved in the church. So we came and we sat in the very back over here in this area uh, uh, behind the infamous pole. We were right behind the pole. And I'm like... We got good seats. This poll was great. So uh, we sit through service. We got done. It was like, man, this is the place that we want to call home. So we began to come here. And each week we came, we learned how important it was to consume the word of God, just to get in God's word daily and just eat of his word and just really have a dedicated Bible life. So I feel like after nine years, I might be able to talk a little bit about it. So I'm going to talk to you guys about it tonight. And there's a perfect story in the Bible, and it comes out of uh, Ezekiel. So uh, if you have a Bible, you can open it to Ezekiel chapter 3, and I'm going to read verses 1 through 4. If you don't, don't have a Bible, we'll put it up on the screen for you. But let me give you a little backstory first. So Ezekiel is a prophet of God, and a lot of times in our prayer life, we want to be bold, so we boldly declare to God, God, give us visions, give us dreams, Get, you know, just open the heavens up like you did in the Old Testament with the prophets, and then you go and you read about visions that the prophets had, and you're like, God, maybe an email or like a text message, like a PowerPoint presentation, something a little less than that, because Ezekiel has this vision, and the heavens open up, these four-faced people come out, they got four sets of wings, and they can move in every direction without turning, and it's like, man, God, I don't know if I'm emotionally stable to handle that. <laughs> so, you know, just a quick text, you know, like a, a Facebook message, you know, if you could just do that. So Ezekiel, he gets this vision, and then God shows up in the vision. And God begins to speak to him, and this is what he said, and I'll read it. It's uh, Ezekiel chapter 3, verses 1 through 4. It reads like this. The voice said to me, Son of man, eat what I have given you. Eat this scroll. Then go and give its message to the people of Israel. So I opened my mouth, and he fed me the scroll. 
Fill your stomach with this, he said. And when I ate it, it tasted as sweet as honey in my mouth. Then he said, son of man, go to the people of Israel and give them my messages. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word, that it's a lamp into our feet and a light into our path. God, we just declare that your word is as sweet as honey, God. And we look to just consume your word, just to fill, fill us up with your word, God. Store your word in our hearts that we might not sin against you, God. We thank you for this opportunity to dwell in your house. Amen. Amen. How many parents do we have in here? A lot of parents. Got parents? Good. I was going over this with my wife, and I was like, what if nobody raises their hand? I'm going to be like, we're doomed. There are no parents in here. Uh, so we got parents, though, tons of parents. Um, so you had children, and you said to yourself, you and your spouse discussed this, I am not going to say what my parents used to say to me to my kids. I'm not going to do it. But then you slave, and you cook this awesome meal, and your child's like, I'm not going to eat that. And the first thing you say is what your parents said to you. The one thing you swore you'd never say. You're going to eat what I put in front of you or you're going to go to bed hungry. Right? You know? That's exactly right. I wonder how many hungry kids are actually out there going to bed. None! Because there's a good cop and there's a bad cop. There's always a parent like, yes, yes, you tell them. You tell them. And then they're like, I ain't eating that. And you're like, well, you're going to bed hungry. And then the other parent's like, look, what do you want? I'll sneak it to you. I'll sneak it to you. Grandparents, total opposite. Whatever you want. You want two of them, I'll give you two of them. Because when you're that age, you love kids, you just love other people's kids. You know, so it's like, hey, whatever you want, I will give you. I will give you ten of them because you are just this awesome little person. And I love it. Fathers, you can relate to this. Fathers, when your wife cooks for your kids and your kids look at your wife and they're like, I don't like your cooking. It's like, I love you, child of mine, but you have just won a place that I cannot defend you. Uh, you're on your own. Like, I can't go there. Uh, and no matter what, you're, uh, uh, somebody else could cook the exact same things and your kids would eat it and ask for seconds. It's just how it works. It's like, man, we live in a fallen world. What in the world is going on? But we see this in this story. We see father feeding son. God in heaven said, son of man, take what I have given you and eat it. The Bible says that we don't live on bread alone, but every word that comes out of the mouth of God. So the Bible takes something what us as people can all agree on. Us as people, we, we have two things in common, our love for food and sin. It's the two things. We can relate in those things. We all have to eat. And we all have sin. So the Bible is taking something that we can relate with, bread, because we have to consume. When we're thinking about survival, we all think about, man, I got to survive. I got to have food. So we consume food. We eat food. We ingest food. So it's comparing food to the word of God. So we have to consume the word of God. We have to in ingest the word of God inside of us. And we have to fill ourselves with the word of God. The Bible says that in the beginning, God said, and then there was. God spoke, and then there was life. God said, let there be light, and there was light. So without God's word, we wouldn't exist because God's word is what spoke it into existence. And Ezekiel, in this story, we see in it, Ezekiel says that God's word was as sweet as honey. No matter what. No matter how you receive God's word, it will always be as sweet as honey. And many of us separate ourselves from the word of God because we see it as judging. But there's a difference between judging and conviction. Conviction brings repentance. Repentance brings freedom. So even in God's discipline, even when God's word disciplines us to make better choices, when God's word disciplines us to make uh, uh, to just be better in our actions, that it will always be sweet because on the other side of God's discipline there is blessing and God didn't say just eat of this word he said eat of this eat of this scroll eat of this scroll and then go eat of this scroll and then go tell the message so we have to consume the word of God and then we have to go and tell it's the opposite of show and tell 
We got to consume the word of God. We got to eat the word of God. We got to have a daily habit of Bible reading so that we can go out and we can tell people what we're experiencing, tell people what is happening in our lives through the word of God. And a lot of us, I do this probably daily, probably like 10 times a day. I ask God, God, use me. That's a, that's a bold prayer because you can pray it, but you don't get to choose how God uses you. And you ask for it, so, you know, you got to commit to that thing. So I ask for it all the time, God, use me, use me, use me. God said, eat of this thing that I have given you, eat of this thing that I have given you, and go tell. Consume this GPS, consume this map, consume this word that I have given you, and go tell the world. Go tell the world what the word is. You know, we are Christians, which means little Christ. And Christ, in his ministry, he began to tell the good news about the Father in the heaven and salvation through him and salvation as he would go to the cross. But uh, we, spread the, we spread the good news. Lost my place. Sorry, we spread the good news through that. Jesus was spreading the good news, and he showed us in the word that the word was for everyone. Not just a particular people, not just one group of people, not just one bunch, but the word of God was for everybody. So our calling as Christians, when we declare that Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior, that we are called to consume the word of God and then go tell people about the word of God. Go tell people about Jesus Christ because it's for everybody. And the way that everybody hears about it is when we go and we tell about it, when we go and speak about the word. It's like when you, uh, uh, it's like trying to tell somebody what something tastes like, but yet we haven't tasted it ourselves. We can't tell people about the Word of God if we haven't ate the Word of God ourselves. We can't tell people about what Jesus did if we haven't read the gospel ourselves and we haven't experienced it. We hadn't put that Word inside of us. The Bible says, in this story, not only did he tell Ezekiel to eat it and then go, but he said, fill your stomach with this. Fill yourself with the word of God. He didn't say sample it. He didn't say take a little bite of it. He said, fill yourself up with the word of God. And the reason we fill ourselves up with the word of God so that when we don't need the word, the word is there. Because there's a lot of times Life is good. There's a lot of times that we're living in the blessing. And it's like, man, life is awesome right now. I really don't need the word of God. But God said, take and fill yourself with this thing. Fill yourself with the word because we fill ourselves up. So in the moment when life happens and we need God, God is there because we have filled ourselves up with the word. It's like hydrating yourself. Come on, we all have experienced this. We get dehydrated. We're like, man, I'm really dehydrated right now. Uh, I probably should drink some water. But in reality, if we would just drink the water every day, if we would just consume the right amount of water every day, we wouldn't get dehydrated. God's word wasn't meant to be an as-needed basis. It was meant to be like a vitamin. So consumption daily. And if any husband can relate to me on this, I come in. And I'm like, I'm really tired and down. I, you know, I just don't feel good. My wife's like, you should probably start taking vitamins. And I'm like, what is this magic pill that you're talking about? And she's like, you know, you just take a daily vitamin. It gives you, you know, your daily uh, vitamins that your body needs. And I'm like, where are they at? She's like, well, here's one. And I'll eat this vitamin, you know, and I might do it for a couple days. And I'm like, oh, man, uh, your magic pill is not working. You know, I've been in taking this vitamin, and I'm not feeling any better. She said, well, you know, the last time you took one was about three months ago. So uh, it takes you eating it every day. It, you know, it takes two seconds to swallow that pill. It's like, I'm swallowing a pill right now. Uh, but so, uh, yes, but that's how the word of God is. You have to consume it daily. You have to eat of it daily because we're like, God, where were you at? When we consume the word daily, we stay focused on God. 
We, stay, we keep our eyes on God. We keep set on God because we are, day, we are filling ourselves up with his word every day. It's like a vitamin, man. It does our body good. We feel good after we read the word of God each and every day. And when you read so much of it, you begin to get filled with the word of God. And you fill yourself up so much that the word of God begins to overflow out of you. And now all the people that you influence in your life, they begin to be affected by you filling up with the word of God. Because so much of it is in you, it's beginning to overflow out of you and touch on them. You're like, how's that possible? Like, well, when we read, like when we take a vitamin, we feel better. When we read the word of God, we feel better. So now we're going into our workplaces, and now we got our shields up from the fiery darts that the devil is sending our way. But yet we're full of joy, and we're full of happiness, and we're full of love, and we're full of grace, and we're full of mercy. And these people begin to look at us, and they say, man, how can you come in to this place each and every day and be as happy as you are? And you can say, look, I'm on a vitamin. And they're like, really? What vitamin? You say the word of God for everyone, you know, real, real small. And they're like, what? And you're like, they're like, how much does that cost? And you're like, guess what? It is absolutely free. And they're like, sounds too good to be true. And you're like, well, guess what? It's the truth. Where do I get it? And then you trick them into coming to church. You're like, man, it's this place over on Fredica. Uh, they're only open on Sundays and Wednesdays. It's kind of weird. But uh, you get in there, and you get it, and it's awesome, and you feel like I feel right now. And the great thing about the Word of God, the awesome thing about it is you can never have too much of it. It's the one thing in your life. You know, you wish you could just eat all that ice cream and eat all those, drink all those Cokes and everything. But, you know, once you get over the age of 30, it's like life changes. People tell me that, you know, once you hit 30, I'm like, are you kidding me? My metabolism is a superhero. I got over 30, I was like, oh, that's what they were talking about. Oh, my gosh, are you kidding me? But the word of God you can eat as much of it, you can consume as much of it as you absolutely want to. There is, there is no limit. And you can fill yourselves up and you can read and you can consume it daily. And you can feel better for it. I will, uh, I will end. I'm landing the plane here, okay? This is probably the first of three landings. So uh, the Bible says that we, uh, he told Ezekiel, to op or Ezekiel said, I opened my mouth, and he fed me. It's a sign of surrender, father feeding child. And most of your mothers are like, yeah, right, that doesn't happen. It's more like mother feeding child. But this is heavenly father. Heavenly father feeding child. Ezekiel said he opened his mouth, and God fed him. It was a sign of surrender. He surrendered to God. God said, eat of this thing that I have given you. Eat of this word. Eat of this scroll. And Ezekiel said, yes, Father. And he opened his mouth. God fed him the scroll. Ezekiel said, it was as sweet as honey. We have to surrender to God in every area of our life. And we have to let the word of God consume us, fill us up, get into every crevice, every area of our lives. So when that happens, if you're in here and you say, man, you know, I got a situation in my work, I encourage you, consume the word of God. If you're a young person in here and you say, man, I'm, I'm having trouble in school, I encourage you, consume the word of God. You say, man, my marriage, it's really on the rocks. I encourage you, consume the word of God. You say, man, there's strife in my family. Consume the word of God. You say, man, how, John, how can you, how can consuming the word of God help in these situations? How can just by reading words on a page help in those tough situations that you just listed? It's because when you read an autobiography of somebody, you connect with the author. So I don't know if you've ever read an autobiography, but it's about somebody's life, you know, and you're reading it and you're connecting with that person on a level that you wouldn't because you didn't know them. So when you open up the Word of God, and you begin to re read the Word of God, you begin to consume the Word of God and just the Word of God, you begin to connect with God on a different level. And then that connection opens up conversation. And then conversation leads to prayer. And then prayer leads to all these amazing things, all this new world that God has to offer for you. The Bible says that we, we get faith by hearing, hearing the Word of God. 
So that when you're reading the Word of God and you're hearing the Word of God, I don't know about you, but even when I read quietly, I hear this voice in my head. It, I'm like, man, is that what I sound like? Uh, I hear this voice in my head, and I'm hearing the Word of God. And what that's doing is it's bringing a faith up inside of me. It's renewing a faith inside of me. So now in these areas, these tough areas of life, now I have faith that God is interceding in these situations. I have faith that God will heal me. I have faith that God will put my marriage back together. I have faith that God will handle the situation at work. I have faith that God will handle the situation at school. I have faith in every area of my life now because I have consumed the Word of God. I have ate of it. And now I have something that I can go and I can tell everybody that is in my life, everybody that I'm I'm surrounded with, I can say, hey, you're dealing with this situation. Let me tell you what the Bible says. Hey, man, you got this going on in your life. Let me tell you what the Bible says. And it's all just in daily consumption of the word, just eating the word every day, eating the word. That's a, that's a crazy term, eating the word. And, uh, but it's true. You know, we eat food, we consume food, and food is substance, but we eat the Word of God because the Word of God is substance, and it sustains us, and it builds us up, and it fuels us. And I ran this by my daughter. I was like, honey, if I say eating the Word of God, do you know what that means? Do you, do you understand what that means? She was like, yeah, it means you're putting the Word of God inside of you. This is what they're learning in kids' ministry back there, by the way. So... It was, it was a celebratory moment. I was like, man, what an awesome celebratory moment. But it, really, I kind of took a step back, and I was like, are you smarter than me? Because <laughs> uh, you're only nine years old, and I don't know if I can handle you. You get much smarter than this. It's like, it was a scary moment, really. I'm like, oh, my gosh. But back in, uh, in the youth and back in kids, we constantly preach consuming the Word of God daily because guess what? Life happens daily. And when life happens daily, you need to be protected. You need to be built up. You need to be shielded by something. And what better to be shielded by than the Word of God? What better to be able to attack the enemy than with the Word of God? Because the Bible says that where there is light, there cannot be darkness. And the Word of God is light the Word of God is Jesus. The Bible says that Jesus was the Word, and the Word was with God in the beginning. And then that Word became flesh and moved into your neighborhood. So you're in here and you say, man, I struggle experiencing Jesus. I struggle feeling Jesus into my life. I encourage you, open up the Word of God. Because now you have taken what you once couldn't see and you've made it visible. Because you are reading Jesus. You are reading Jesus his life. You're reading about him. And then those things are going to fuel you and you're going to begin to change people's lives all around you. And there is no better feeling in life. It's a great feeling when you come in here and you change your life and you're like, God, I give, I give my life over to you. I give my life to you. I give every area of my life. I am forgiven. But it is an amazing feeling when you change somebody else's life. Because we were called to, to, to be a blessing and just to bless other people. And when we begin to fill ourselves up with the instruction book that God so generously left us, then we know how to handle anything in life. You say, man, I, 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 need, I need help in this area. The Word of God can help you out of that area. You don't have to wait for a Sunday or a Wednesday to have somebody come up here and speak into a microphone. God operates in that every single week, but you don't have to wait. You can, in your own home, you can open up the Word of God, and you can begin to experience God even in your own home. I, I'm, I, I hope that you're encouraged by this message. I hope that you go home and that uh, you begin to consume the Word of God, and I encourage you just to look, just to focus and see how much your life can change just by consuming this vitamin that is the Word of God how much better you'll feel even in the places that you thought there couldn't be life in anymore. Um, thank you. Let me, let me um, I would like for everyone to stand. I, I would like to pray for you. Just, just pray that, that you would be built up, that you would be encouraged. Let, let's pray. 
Father, I thank you for each and every person in here. Lord, I just pray that they're always the head and never the tail. Father, always above and never beneath, God. God, I pray that this daily vitamin that you have given us in your word, God, that it would build us up, that it would fuel us up, God, that they would go out into the world and they would be a light in their area, God, a light in the darkness, in their workplaces, in their schools, in their families, Father, in their marriages. God, I just pray a blessing over all these things, God. We thank you for your word, that it's a lamp into our feet and a light into our path, God. We thank you for your guidance. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you for listening to me ramble. <laughs> but I hope you're encouraged. I hope you're blessed. You guys have a great week. And uh, Pastor Brian will be here this Sunday, so you don't have to worry. It won't be a repeat of me. So uh, come back this Sunday. It's going to be a great message. It's the blessing of Abraham. So be here this Sunday. Invite somebody to church. Change somebody's life. <laughs>